Hello everyone, Wrathful Lion, and welcome to part one of the last Airbender review. Now, I'm going to be going over every part of the movie, well, in separate parts. I'll try to upload them as quickly as possible, and I am very sorry for those of you who were expecting, like, music and stuff. I'm a, I'm a fail with computers, so it's going to take me a while to actually be able to do any of that stuff, but I will try to add pictures and stuff. So let's just see how this goes, shall we? So yes, The Last Airbender. I'm sure you all know how I feel about this piece of shit. Uh, you're probably wondering why I'm not too wrathful right now. Well, it's because I'm going to look forward to ripping this... this... I've already called it every curse available, so I guess this piece of Eh, I don't know what the fuck to call it. But anyways, part one, the characters. Oh, God. Where to start? Let's start at the beginning like we always do. Okay, let's see. Aang. Oh, and don't worry, I'll get to the name mispronunciate. Mispronunciate. Almost as bad as Shyamalan. Alright. <clears throat> so yes, the first part. Aang. Aang surprisingly is the one that will make he Aang will be the least upsetting oddly you see the pro see here's the thing in the show Aang was yeah he was like he was youthful he was happy he was energetic he was hyperactive he, he was in short a little kid but he was the avatar it was his duty to put others above himself and to save the world. And he was a kind and sensitive boy and stuff, but he was still a little kid. You know, he could still be easily distracted. He had a share of goofy moments, and he was... He, oftentimes, he would rather have fun than do anything serious. And Zuko made it very clear how he felt about that in Season 3, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're destroying a beach house. Anyways, but yeah, that's Aang's personality in a nutshell. He was a little kid. And that's kind of what made it so sad, was that as the Avatar, he would have to put others' happiness above his own, because that's his job as the Avatar, is to protect the world from danger and maintain balance. It took him a while to get into the more serious role. But even though he was serious, he or he did become serious eventually, he was still a happy kid. Now, this Aang, just, I did, uh, this will be the last time I use this cover, for now anyways, but just look at this guy right here. Does he look happy to you? No. He doesn't. The Aang in this movie is just like... He's just... Ugh. He's just so... Wooden. There's really no other word to describe it. He, he's an M. Night Shyamalan character in this movie. He's just completely wooden. There's no real way to describe him. He's... As soon as you meet him, there's no fun to him at all. There's no energy. It doesn't feel like we're watching a little kid. It feels kind of like you're watching a cardboard cutout. Now, don't get me wrong. I have not. Before we go any further, I have nothing against any of the people in this movie, any of the actors or actresses, because, well, I mean, I don't know their careers, and honestly, I don't really care, but I'm pretty sure this is their first time appearing in anything, except for Zuko, I, the actor who played him, I heard he was, that he was like on, on the, the late show, or so. I don't, I don't know, I, uh, anyways, but, you know, it's like, this is, pretty much their first time appearing in a major motion picture so unless they're given good lines to work with and a and a good director 
they're not really gonna get they're not really gonna get a good performance. Okay, back to Aang. But yeah, Aang is wooden and just he's the protagonist, he's the main he's the hero, that's all there is to it. No soul. Nothing. See, see how hard it is for me to describe him? That should say it all right there. Katara. <sighs> Alright. Katara in the show, one of the best characters, and was like, she was just like, she was determined, she was motherly, she had her share of goofy moments, but she was the most mature out of the entire group. She was very calm, she was wise beyond her years, and she was just a badass as the show went on. I, I would have to say that next to Zuko, her character went under the most development, I would say. But in this, she was just... Okay, and my I, I gave my assumption of her in my in my rant. She was just she had this look on her face the whole time. Again, same as Aang, wooden and Yeah. There's Katara. Just wooden, unable to describe her. Sokka. Sokka is one of my favorite characters just because Well, he's the only non bender, and also because he is so stupid and so funny, and as the show grows, he becomes less stupid, and more mature, and more of a warrior like his dad, but he's still funny as hell, and he can still say something stupid once in a while. But again, this Sokka, same thing as Katara and Aang, except Sokka always has this business face the whole time, like he's serious, and he's scowling like this, and he... He is incredibly stupid. He's just, oh my god, he is so freaking stupid. I mean, first off, I'm not an expert in ice breaking, but I'm pretty sure that that if you're standing over an ice sheet, you like solid layer of ice over the water, that you shouldn't just crack the ice wherever you think you should. I'm pretty sure there's a lot more skill to that, and that you shouldn't do that, unless you want the ice to break apart in all directions and like break open and then fall and sink in the water, although that wouldn't be a good... Hey Sokka, wanna, do, wanna go do that again? So yeah, there's Sokka. St he's even stupider and, than the one in the show was at first, and he has the same problem Aang has. He looks way too angry. <sighs> Zuko... You know, the actor tries, and I and I can respect him for that. But the Zuko in this movie is just horrible. They they completely missed out on all the emotion you could tell was in Zuko in the first season. All the you could it was like it, again cardboard cutout. Oh, and the scar could barely see it. it. I didn't even... I was looking for it the whole time he was on the screen. Iroh. Oh, God, Iroh. You were, you were my favorite character. Iroh is just... There. He's just there. I mean, he does say something wise once or twice that's taken right out of the show, but aside from that, it is not the same Iroh. It's not the same tea-drinking fun-loving guy we used to see. So yeah, there's that for Iroh. I'm sorry, but that character just disappointed me. Uh, let's see. Ozai. Oh my fucking god, how do you screw up Ozai? Okay, what? Well, first of all, the actor does not did not look intimidating in the slightest. The outfit, not intimidating either. And his mannerisms were like, he was fruity! He was freaking fruity! He was like, hmm, yes. Yeah, so I've seen it's like Ozai is not fruity. Ozai is evil, dark, and menacing, and he will whoop your no, he'll burn your ass. So yeah, they fucked that up too. I'm sorry this is such a short review, but I have to keep it in I have to keep it under ten minutes for each part, and I don't want to dwell too much on the character. So there's the characters. And um Yeah. Stay tuned for part two.